G'day folks, welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 4th of December 2014 for Australia. My name is Chris Nitzo and this update is sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Across the globe, the big news today is Tropical Cyclone Hagapit, which is now a Category 5 Tropical Cyclone. We'll have a look at some uh, pretty interesting satellite imagery from that system shortly. Also, we have a tropical low here under the Bureau of Meteorology's guidance. We see that they're issuing track maps for it, so it may hit Category 1 status at some stage over the next 24 or so hours before weakening. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but we won't spend too much time on it because it won't hit the coast. Uh, also, over Australia, we're expecting a massive rain event that uh, should start, or a storm event, I should say, rather than a general rain event. But because the storm event will be so widespread, we pretty well every single location, if you live west of the coast, will receive some type of rainfall. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail as well. Elsewhere in the tropics, we see another area of convection developing in the northwest Pacific, once again inhibiting the chances of anything happening south of the equator because we keep getting these little cyclones, and or well, this is a big cyclone, but we keep getting these little convective build-ups and flare-ups just north of the equator, and that stops those northeasterly trade winds from turning into our monsoon. So here's our tropical low, uh, located well west of Western Australia, just on the edge of our area of responsibility. No threat whatsoever to any part of the coastline or any part of the islands that we have out here as our territories. So not too much to worry about this tropical low. In fact, the biggest thing I'm worried about is a waste of a perfectly good name. Tropical Cyclone Kate, if this does get named, it'll only be named for an hour or two, uh, and then we would have lost one of the better names of cyclones that I've seen around. So for, I'm pretty well hoping that it doesn't turn into a cyclone, and then we leave Kate for probably a more significant system a little later on. But anyway, this is the track of the tropical low. Going to push southeastwards, and then eventually going to push southwards, and then whatever's left of it will push southwestwards. Fair error margin here, but overall it doesn't really matter how far out the Bureau are in this particular projection of the system, because there is just no one out there. On the latest technical bulletin, we can see the Bureau of Meteorology probably not expecting it now to become a cyclone. They were earlier today uh, looking at 996 hectopascals and 35 knot maximum winds. And probably, as we saw in, the, in this particular image here, the winds tend to be only on the southern half of the system and not really wrapping around the centre more than halfway around at least of the actual low level circulation center so folks at this stage it's, it is very touch and go as it as we've been telling you it has been for a number of days now as to whether it does become a tc over to the northwest pacific and feast your eyes on this beauty this is category 5 tropical cyclone hagapit one of the strongest we've seen this year across the globe it is pushing in a west northwesterly direction towards these islands here these islands here are the philippines we're looking at more of a central to northern philippines landfall it's just a beautiful system to watch do its thing the latest Joint Typhoon Warning Centre track shows the system clearly hitting the coast of the Philippines. The problem, of course, being that if it follows this track, we're going to see an extended period of extreme weather for the eastern central Philippines. So this is not good news, this track. It's not going to be like Tropical Cyclone Haiyan last year or Yolanda last year, which kept pushing westwards and just smashed through the, and then within 24 hours was out the back of the Philippines. This little blight is going to be all over that east coast region and it's going to be moving slowly. Slowly, it's going to be dumping torrential rainfall. We're going to see a very big storm surge, and we're going to see that storm surge continue on and on and on. And we're not going to see it just move in for an hour or two and then and then leave. Uh, this storm surge is going to be significant and for a very long period of time, and it will affect more areas. So this is the worst possible scenario track here shown by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. A slightly less daunting track is this one here, shown by the Japan Japanese Meteorological Agency. We can see that this is the system that this is the bureau that is in charge of cyclones in this region. We can see the system pushing westwards, just like we did in the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. So there is very little doubt that it's going to make landfall in the Philippines. But the issue, I guess, becomes that this one has a more direct impact, and uh, the system pushes only slightly faster. So we're still talking about a fairly slow 10 to 15 kilometer an hour moving system by the time it gets over to the eastern. Philippines. Philippines, so it's not good news no matter which way you look at it.
Okay, looking at to today's satellite, uh, sorry, the synoptic chart for Australia, when we can see these trough systems in through inland Queensland, extending into northern uh, into the Northern Territory. Uh, these trough systems are quite deep. We can see this high pressure system being shunted here to the south, uh, well south of where it would normally lie. Uh, we're going to see a continuation of trophy conditions here and what we're going to see is that as this cold front pushes eastwards we're going to see this trough system deepen further we're going to see scattered thunderstorm activity all across east of this particular trough system here so Queenslanders and Northern Territory folk you're going to see a big increase in thunderstorm activity over the next four five six and so on days so we're talking a continued and prolonged thunderstorm outbreak initially most of that activity will remain inland but that activity will gradually and I do mean gradually as in very slowly make its way to the coast as we head into what the one to two week period so if we take a look at tomorrow's rainfall we can see a fairly a widespread but isolated activity across the Northern Territory and we've also got a widespread but isolated activity over northwestern Queensland much more scattered activity across the southern parts of Queensland most of it remaining well inland though on Friday on Saturdays where things get a bit hectic as we head towards southern parts of Queensland we could be seeing falls of over 100 millimeters on the downs um, and also if we move northwards into the central highlands and coal fields where we could see some pretty significant thunderstorm and rainfall activity from those thunderstorms and that activity continues further to the north so don't be surprised if we see one big giant line of thunderstorms developing across Queensland also the Northern Territory you're going to see a continuation of that widespread but isolated uh, thunderstorm activity so widespread in terms of its coverage uh, isolated in terms of its frequency and in occurrence uh, on Sunday we see a reinforcement of that trough system inland and so this is what you're getting you're getting some massive amounts of thunderstorm activity and generally slow moving thunderstorm activity across the inland northwestern parts of Queensland and also eastern half of the Northern Territory so you're gonna see big rain accumulations here especially if you land under one of those storms they're gonna be full of moisture they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be some significant rainfall potential in them so hopefully they will be widespread enough and scattered enough to be uh, useful in terms of early season rainfall over to the northern inland parts of Queensland this will be your first real taste of good storm activity on the Sunday afternoon and that activity extends southwards into the central inland districts of Queensland then as we head to Monday once again look at this rainfall folks just phenomenal rainfall across Queensland uh, the rainfall starts to ease across the Northern Territory we will see a, an area of enhanced thunderstorm activity possibly due to an atmospheric wave just here to the north of the Tiwi Islands we're not expecting a low pressure system from that but it always needs to be watched when when these one of these tropical waves comes through uh, we do need to watch what might happen on them but at this stage nothing untoward except for extra rainfall but folks once again the prime area of interest is this Queensland region no surprises then that the next four days we're going to see falls of 50 to 100 millimeters over the far northwestern parts of the state general falls of 25 to 50s and also over the eastern half of the Northern Territory some really good rainfall here folks it's not too not too often that you get this this central region of the territory getting falls of 50 to 100 mils in the next four days also as I mentioned all that storm activity across Queensland finally starts to see some accumulated rainfall totals and those totals around the downs could be very significant could create some flooding over the next eight days now the four days after that you can see this area around the downs once again receiving a lot more rainfall in the four to eight day period as well we see an increase in thunderstorm and shower activity across northern inland Queensland most of that activity remaining just off the coast still remember that the that the push of that trough system to the east is only going to be very very slow so it's not going to be until later next week where we see a lot of that rain then starting to hit the coast and, and by goodness for some of the model for some of the modeling that we're seeing uh, some of that some of those coastal falls will be quite significant once the trough system starts to push eastwards but that's not going to happen for a while yet so the inland parts of Queensland are going to enjoy some really good shower and storm activity the other thing to note over the four to eight day period is this big increase in amounts of moisture coming in from the northwest into the Northern Territory and into the northern part northern extremities of WA so we're going to see a big increase in shower and 
current storm activity here in the four to eight day period compared to the one to four day period. So you can see that activity steeping further south, becoming more widespread over inland districts. And finally, if we take a look at the eight day at the eight day period, uh, so the next week we can see here generally falls of possibly over 200 millimetres over southern inland parts of Queensland, uh, grading to 50 to 100 over the southeast corner, and then 50 to 100 expected over inland parts of northern Queensland too. Now these are the regions that have not received much rainfall at all. This southern inland part of Queensland and this northern inland part of Queensland have not received much rainfall at all over the last six months, uh, particularly so in the build up period over northern inland Queensland has been one of the driest on record. So hopefully this will now start to break the shackles. Over the, north, over the western parts of the state, look at some of these brilliant falls here over the next seven days. And also over the Northern Territory, central half of the Northern Territory, looking at some really good rainfall. And then, as I mentioned, the four to eight day period looks pretty good for the north, northern Kimberley. Just a reminder, folks, that's all we've got time for tonight. But just a reminder, if you would like more information on the individual states, uh, please think about becoming a subscriber to Oz Cyclone Chasers. Your yearly subscription goes straight back into a do it, helping us do what we do. So for more details on that, head to ozcyclonechasers.com.au and click on subscribe to OCC. Thanks very much for watching. We'll talk again on Monday night. Have a great weekend and enjoy the storms.